Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the best stocks to buy, as well as the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know about. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. Stocks sank recently after the latest GDP report showed slower than anticipated growth for the general economy. On top of that, we are also seeing renewed fears that the Federal Reserve may not cut interest rates this year after all, and this is thus scaring investors. Ideally, investors would want the Federal Reserve to lower interest rates because this will act as a positive catalyst for the general stock market, thus pushing all of the indexes higher in their respected prices. As of right now, the indexes, which would be the NASDAQ, the SP500, and the Dow Jones, are down around 0.64%, 0.46%, and 0.98% respectively. Yet, it seems that the bad news just keeps on coming, considering that meta platforms recently fell by 11% because investors are suspicious of the company's ballooning AI costs. This is why meta shares are only trading at around $441.38 per share, and despite this decline, I am still buying into this company because fundamentally, they are an extremely strong technology and AI company to invest into, but always make sure to do your own research before you make any investment decision. You should also be aware that other tech giants, such as Alphabet and Microsoft, and we could even include a social media company named Snapchat, all reported Q1 earnings yesterday. And generally speaking, they were all very good. In yesterday's video, we talked about how Alphabet, which is the parent company to Google and YouTube, issued their first ever dividend, and they also authorized $70 billion worth of stock buybacks, which is great news for this company. On top of that, Microsoft also beat the revenue forecasts, and they showed strong strength in regards to their cloud services. Lastly, Snapchat, which which is a social media company, their share price soared after they topped earnings estimates, thus impressing investors. And then lastly, they also impressed investors by issuing that they have 422 million global daily active users, and this number is continuously growing day by day and month over month. So now that you have a general overview, let's get into some stock analysis. We are going to start off talking about airline stocks, starting off with Boeing as well as Southwest. According to the article, after the Boeing fallout, which was due to their 737 MAX door plug flying off mid-flight, this has negatively impacted a plethora of various airlines. The reason for this is that multiple airlines had to stop flying these Boeing aircrafts, which clearly negatively impacted their revenues and their bottom line as well, because they couldn't issue flights even though they did have these planes. Instead, these planes are now going to have to go through a lot of security checks before taking off, and this clearly slowed progress, and this was negative news for these general businesses. What's even more interesting is that Southwest, ticker symbol LUV, which trades at $26.98, recently reported earnings. And the reverberation of Southwest not being able to fly their Boeing airplanes is clearly negatively impacting their financial results. Due to this financial blow, they are shutting down operations at four airports, which would include Houston, Syracuse, Washington State, and even one over in Mexico. In my personal opinion, this company will bounce back, but over the short term or even over the next few years, this company's share price could slump majorly. But now let's talk more about Boeing, ticker symbol BA. Boeing has literally burned through $4 billion in cash ever since this fiasco started. We even have United Airlines, ticker symbol UAL, issue a recent report saying that if it weren't for this Boeing debacle, they would have been profitable on the quarter. But this is also negatively impacting other airlines besides Southwest and United Airlines. As an example, Alaska Air reported a $132 million loss and they pointed to Boeing as the culprit for this. Lastly, we even saw Delta, which doesn't even have any 737 MAX jets in their fleet from Boeing, still posted major losses. The main problem for Delta is that they are actually ordering various Boeing aircrafts, and they said that their expected order of 100 737 MAX 10 jets are going to be delayed by about two years. So this is literally catastrophic for airlines right now. For IPO news, you should also be aware that Rubrik, which is a cybersecurity firm, recently popped up and their share price surged 
averaged according to their first day of trading. Obviously, investors are hyping up this company because they recently had an initial public offering through an IPO, but I do believe this company will pull back in their share price, especially considering that they are not profitable right now. The last stock market news update that you should be aware of before we go into the best stocks to buy would be from Novo Nordisk, ticker symbol NVO. This company is in the news because of their weight loss pharmaceutical named Wagovi, which has been approved for heart health prescriptions as well. In essence, this is great news for this company, and I believe their share price will continue to jump higher. And this is why I personally hold Novo Nordisk as well as companies like Eli Lilly and United Health in my personal portfolio. But I would love to hear your thoughts about any or all of these stories. Now let's get into the best stocks to buy, starting off with none other than Palantir Technologies. Palantir Technologies is a big data and analytics company which serves both commercial enterprises as well as government clients. And one analyst believes this company is excessively overvalued. But despite this, he actually increased his rating for this company. So let's talk about it. Palantir Technologies share price jumped after a bear, which is a negative critic naysayer, upgraded the company's share rating. And this drew and created confidence in their current investor base. Analyst Brian White upgraded shares of Palantir to a neutral rating from his original sell rating. However, he did not give a price target. He says in a research note, and I quote, in our view, Palantir is well positioned to benefit from the long-term AI trend and capitalize on volatile geopolitics, end quote. So then this begs the question, why isn't this analyst more bullish and positive when it comes to Palantir Technologies? Well, he says that the company's valuation is excessive right now, so we can't get behind the company at their current share price. Now, there is a grain of truth to this because Palantir stock trades for around 61.8 times the company's expected forward earnings. And to put this into perspective, this is three times higher than what the S&P 500 trades for, considering that the S&P trades at only 20 times their earnings. As of right now, Palantir Technologies' PLTR stock trades for around $22.57 per share. However, some analysts believe this company could jump to $30 per share or even as high as $35 per share. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down below about Palantir Technologies. And for me personally, I do hold this company in my portfolio, but always make sure to do your own research and remember to practice proper risk management by not overexposing yourself too heavily to any singular stock. Next up, let's talk about some electric vehicle news in regards to Neo Leo. Auto and Xpeng. It seems that currently investors are happy with what these companies are achieving right now, and this is why Neo's share price jumped by 8.8%, Li Auto's share price jumped by around 6.6%, and Xpeng's share price jumped by 10.5%. So let's talk about why that is. Recently, executives at both Neo and Xpeng said on CNBC that they are committed to providing more moderately priced vehicles in 2024 to their customers, and this is great news. If you didn't know, these Chinese EV makers normally beat American companies out when it comes to quality at a cheap price. Obviously, Tesla already has a plan to compete against these companies in the United States and over in China, considering that in 2025, they will be releasing their cheap or moderately priced electric vehicles to compete with these types of companies. But Neo and Xpeng are not the only companies that are getting a green light from investors, because according to the article, it seems that investors were bidding Li Auto higher in sympathy with Neo and Xpeng. Therefore, as the share price of Neo and Xpeng rise, Li Auto was literally along for the ride. But don't count Li Auto out just yet, because investors are very optimistic about Li Auto because they've been benefiting from growing demand from their flagship family SUV, which is moderately priced. According to the article, unless investors are comfortable with a fair amount of risk by investing into Neo and Xpeng, because A, they are foreign companies, and B, their valuations just don't justify their current share prices, investors would be wise to look into Li Auto. Li Auto, unlike Neo and Xpeng, has generated positive net income over the past four quarters, suggesting it could be a better buy than these other EV makers for electric vehicle investors. This not only reduces your risk, but technically, from a value standpoint, Li Auto is a better buying opportunity than Neo and Xpeng. But with that being said, all three of these companies are foreign companies, and they are extremely risky. So always make sure to do your own research to determine if these companies are good for your personal portfolio. For me personally, I've been loading the boat and buying more and more Tesla shares right now, as well as BYD 
key because these are the behemoths that I believe will have the greatest long-term growth potential. But that shouldn't disincentivize you because I also hold Neo and Lee Auto in my personal portfolio, even though the size of my position is much smaller than my positions over in Tesla as well as BYD. But again, always make sure to do your own research. Next up, let's talk about a fantastic stock to buy right now, which would be none other than Enphase Energy. And analysts are even extremely bullish on this company right now, and here's why. According to Barclays, they say the worst is finally behind Enphase Energy. If you didn't know, Enphase creates microinverter systems for solar panels. And an analyst over at Barclays recently upgraded her rating on Enphase to an overweight rating from her original equal weight rating, and here's why. Solar companies have taken a huge hit because of higher than anticipated interest rates, and this disincentivizes investors and people from buying into this type of technology, especially with high interest rates. However, since interest rates are anticipated to lower or decrease either this year or next year, this is going to re-incentivize various investors and people to buy this type of technology. This is just one of the many reasons why this Barclays analyst increased her price target to $134 from her original $115, which implies approximately 24% upside from the share's current price. She goes on to say that the share price's current level provides a reasonable entry point, and to be honest, I do agree with her. And other analysts also agree with both of us, considering that out of 42 analysts that were surveyed, 22 of them say the stock is a buy, 16 say to hold the company, and another 4 say to sell the company. And obviously, these are pretty good odds. We even saw a Mizuho Securities analyst maintain his buy rating on the stock, and he gave this company a $147 price target. So overall, this is clearly a company company to put on your watch list. Next up, let's talk about Roku, which is actually a favorite of Kathy Wood, or at least used to be one of her favorite stocks. And if you didn't know, Roku Inc. operates a television streaming platform. The reason why Roku stock is in the news, ticker symbol ROKU, is because it dropped by around 10% in their share price. So let's talk about why. What I find interesting about this is that by most measures, they actually had a solid first quarter result. But despite this good news, the share price is still falling. From a financial standpoint, their revenues and their earnings improved year over year, and they both beat on what analysts thought the company would bring in. So this is very good news. However, despite this, their shares are still down. So here's why. Despite Roku giving better than anticipated revenue guidance for the second quarter, which is the quarter that we are in right now, their further estimates were lackluster and investors did not want to see that. However, let's focus back on their recent quarter revenues and earnings, because honestly, they did a fantastic job. For the first quarter, analysts thought the company was going to bring in around $848.6 million worth of revenue, but they actually beat this estimate by bringing in $881.5 million, which is great news. Likewise, the company was supposed to bring in a loss of 62 cents per share, but they only brought in a loss of 35 cents per share, and in my opinion, that is very impressive. Yet despite all of this good news, investors just were not pleased with the future forecast of this company. And I partly agree with them, but I do think that this company is rapidly improving. As of right now, this company is too risky to hold in my personal portfolio, but overall, I think later down the road, this company could prove themselves. But until they do prove themselves, I will not be investing investing into this company as of right now, but I would love to hear your thoughts about this company and any of the other stories that we've covered so far. Remember to go and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in the next YT video.